Hi guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for tuning on in and stopping on by. My name is JJ, nice to meet you. I've been playing Car 5 Vanguard for close to about 10 years-ish. <laughs> and I've played Victor for maybe a year or two, two to three years maybe. I think I started playing around in 2017 and I have been playing it ever since. It is one of the most fun decks that I've ever played. Uh, I do main Kagero, however. I do main Kagero as my, as my baby, as my love child. But I have played a lot of Victor <laughs> in the meantime. And one of my uh, tournament tops, or a couple of my tournament tops that I've had uh, with a couple of BCSs have been with Victor. It's one of the most decks that I have a lot of success with, playing against a lot of matchups along the way. And it's uh, it's super fun. It's one of my favorite things. But right now, they have gotten some recent support from, uh, the, uh, from Bushiroad. And we're going to be talking about the Extreme Battler Victor that just got introduced in uh, the Bushy Road Weekly uh, a few days ago. I think it was on Tuesday, actually. We got revealed some of the cards and effects and what they do. I will be talking about the ones that pertain more close to the premium, the ones that I personally care about first. And then we'll get into the deck list a little bit. You saw a bit of an image of it, but we'll get into the rest of it and talk about some of the other options and things that you can probably work on in the future. All right. So we have Extreme Battler Victor. Uh, Axel, 12K, Grade 3 from the V-Series set. Uh, one pretty good card it's going to be in the storm of blue calvary can't remember what other clans are in that set i mean personally to me it's the most important thing for me is victor actually so you know that's good uh auto vanguard circle on place so when place look at top seven cards from the top of your deck uh call up to one grade two or less extreme battler card from among them so it is anything either in the future of victor support that it can come out because this is the first wave of victor support so it could be future proofing for anything in the future and it also talks about some of the extreme battler cards that are in the past as well so stuff like ninjard gosachi gunston jetto hawk uh, arishad you don't want really want to call the arishad unless they reprint the triple rare since there is still one more triple rare slot uh, still available to us, so it could be an Arishad again, uh, or it could be any other <laughs> Nova Grappler unit, so we'll see uh, whether or not that's going to be the case. Um, a card in its name, and uh, call it the Rear Guard Circle, and shuffle your decks. So you get immediately a plus one on place, which is pretty nutty, <laughs> I think. And then it has, when it attacks, auto. Um, Vanguard Circle. Cut a blast one, so blast one, choose up to one of your rear guards and stand it. If that rear guard stood uh, two or more times by this card, by a card's ability, uh, this unit gets drive plus one until end of turn. Includes stand from this ability. It's pretty good. So it also include, includes this ability as well. So if this becomes the uh, second time that it stood a unit it counts it and you get the drive plus one after resolving that fact which is got like it's pretty good it's pretty good like getting a, a victor vanguard for either standard or premium to, to unfortunately i'm not too knowledgeable about how this would be how this would play a part into standard it does seem like a good stuff oriented sort of deck it does give you the card advantage that uh nova grappler or axel deck sometimes needs even though axel does have axel 2 to allow you to draw a card you still sometimes need to commit pieces to the board and having a victor vanguard to be able to search pieces for you is so good it is literally the best thing what victor needed it for a very long time now because even being able to like in premium the zubat victor being able to draw a card and be able to call a unit down give a unit you know uh a restand once per turn ability it this gives you targeted search that if you need like a silver bullet in the situation oh i probably need a guns then right now oh i probably need a gosachi or i need a, go a ninja oh i need my dose ledge right now to be able to finish off the game uh this is really good it is awesome I love, I love what it did with this card. I do not expect this card to be that much in terms of pricing. It might be a high price of like maybe twenty euros, twenty bucks, maybe two thousand, two thousand yen, two thousand five hundred yen. Who knows? We'll see. We'll see in the future of how much it's probably going to be end up priced. Uh, let's move on to any of the other uh, perspective 
cards that were introduced as well. I think let me open up my Discord, uh, and we could talk about some of the other grade ones and twos in that respect. Oh, by the way, we do have a Discord here. Uh, you can follow me in my Discord or join me in my Discord at GG Mr. Rogers. We also have the Question the Meta Discord as well. The the team that I'm also part of. Uh, they have a crushing meta for all discord that I'll be linking down in the description or we'll link down in the description as well So if you're interested in joining us, it's free to join It's we're open to up to anybody who wants to talk about Vanguard and their love for Vanguard and the clans that they love to play with All right, so we have what else we got? Uh, we got extreme battle of those sledge uh, once per time one time um, So when stood by a card's ability, so I I, I I don't like the phrasing stand when stand by a card's ability. I, I, I guess I like to use the past tense of cards. So oftentimes you'll see me say the, the card in a different way than it's supposed to. Just for me, grammatically, it corrects the card for me. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of do this a lot. When cards, uh, when stood by a card's ability, uh, perform the, the effects below depending on the number of times this unit stands its turn. Uh, one. One time, plus ten. Two times, so charge one. Three times, gets another plus 10, and you cannot use Sentinels. Pretty good. Pretty good. Sadly enough, it doesn't trigger multipl multiplicatively. It just triggers once. <laughs> it just triggers once. Um, and then we have uh, Gambaragon. I think this is going to be one of the, mo like one of the coolest uh, grade ones. It, I don't think it replaces a Jurahawk in premium, but I do think it does have a spot next to it. Depending on how much ratio of what cards you probably want to play, uh, it's really entirely up to you. Uh, so why I'm really referencing a lot of premium right now is because I don't really play much standard, and I don't know what a lot of Nova has access to in terms of restanding. I know they have Kick Kick Typhoon, but that's kind of it. <laughs> I think they like we used to play a bit of Kick Kick Typhoon and a bit of. Um, I think we still we still play Brutal Jack. Uh, it really depends on your own taste. Um, because you can kind of use a Brutal Jack and Rise of Custom, another 8th grade grade 1, which would allow you to, if it's a card in the same column as it is restored, it restands himself, allowing you to enable your GB3 in, in one turn. So that's kind of like a, I always kind of focus that on. Um, and let's see. When this attacks, if you have a Vanguard with Victor in its name, Soul Blast 1, stand one of your uh, rear guards and this gets. Uh, 5k on the of turn, which is really good. It's a 13k attacker on its own, so it hits force numbers, it hits protect numbers. I mean, it just hits the vanguard in general, so you don't really have to worry about, um, you know, not being able to hit your vanguard. It's kind of weird it's on a grade 1. I kind of would have expected it to be on a grade 2, but I guess since the grade 2 slots are a bit tight, it at least putting it on another grade 1 gives you the situation that it becomes, a, you know, additional grade 2, so to speak. So, just like what Gunsden was for uh, Victor back then being basically an additional grade 2 that had an effect. Alright, um, and then we have Extreme Battler uh, so Saucer. I don't really like this card that much, but we'll get into this skill, of course. Uh, when placed on Vanguard Circle, discard a card from your hand to draw a card. It's good going second, because you can just get rid of Crick Shield, get an additional card. Um, that's basically what it is. It allows you to filter a little bit, get rid of dead cards out of your hand, drawn into probably too much triggers. Okay, bye-bye, draw another card. Um, then it has once per turn, when this is on the axle circle, um, and it's stood, you may gain it, uh, you may give it plus 10k. That's alright. That's nothing too special. I personally don't think I would really run this. <laughs> I don't think it's that good of a card. And then there is Extreme Battler Brick Pass. It is a great. Three. I mean, in in standard, I think you probably still want to run this because you know you do have you do have an extra attacker in it. So I would definitely probably run this in standard. And it's very weird to have a card like this being a a rare, which is surprising to me. Like this is also a rare being able to restand. So having good value cards like these, being able to pressure your opponent so much in one turn is very strange to me feeling very akin to how g victor was more or less um then we have extreme battler break pass it's a grade zero trigger unit critical trigger um it is a pg <laughs> that's basically it the break pass uh crit uh, draw crit is now a pg that's basically it all right um anything else i mean there are some other like grade twos and and grade threes that were added 
to it. These are pertaining more closely to standard. I'm not going to really talk about these. I'm going to only talk about stuff that are referenced to premium currently. Um, and then we have uh, the build. I'll be showing you the build right now. So we have the build right now. This is the current build that I've been testing. This is the blueprint. Um, I do not think like some of these cards I'll be running as they are right now. I'll be probably changing up how I'll, I'll do this in the future because I feel that the deck uh, has a pretty good um, restanding target in those sledge. So you might not need to run Brutal Jack anymore, or maybe not that much Brutal Jacks. But as I said before, this is trial and error. I'm just basically tossing cards against the wall and seeing where they work, uh, how they work. Uh, I have been testing this for a stream so far, so hopefully, um, you know, in some more testing, I'll, I'll have a more finalized build. But this is just more or less a rough draft. So we do have the two Zubat, two Zubat victors. Um, his skill is. Um, uh, when your Vanguard strides, uh, when your Vanguard strides, come last one, draw a card, place one, choose a unit. Uh, that unit gets once per turn. Uh, when it attacks, choose another rear guard and restand it. That's you can also give that skill to your Vanguard as well. So it becomes sort of like the old excessive battle of victors uh, skill, which he did have a come last one on attack, once per turn, uh, restand when your rear guards give plus five. But that's okay. And then, <laughs> and then uh, end of turn, uh, if you have one or less soul in your soul, soul charge one. If you have one or less counter blast face up, uh, counter charge one and draw a card. If you do both, draw a card, which is still fundamentally good. You do not, <laughs> you do not want to write this card anymore. <laughs> like there is sometimes you want to write it only when you're really down in card advantage. You predominantly want like it's still the best victor out of all three older victors sorry about that out of old victors it's still the best out of all three um <laughs> but it is not good in comparison to having a 12k body which gives you better defensive properties gives you a free card advantage two ways to sunday so it's really really good and then we play the uh new excessive battler uh, we play six restanders, so we play uh, three copies in the Indra, three copies of Gosachi. Uh, these Gosachis can be cool, Hank. Um, in my neighborhood, I have a lot of um, Narakami and Nubatama and Kagura matchups a lot of the times, so I kind of like Gosachi being able to protect myself from that. I, I used to play Gunzund as well in the deck too. So it's sort of like just my own little... Because I play Kagero, I'm scared of playing against Kagero because I know how peace-reliant Novorapla can get. So I at least like to have one silver bullet in deck in a form of resist to protect myself against it. Um, I do think that Gosachi, like in later stages of the game, won't really matter too much. So you can kind of discard it off of your, um, your buster turn because you won't really need him. I mean, he's kind of good to be able to restand something, but you won't really need him that, that much after it. Since you're playing like stand triggers and stuff, all right. Um, and then for the the attackers, <laughs> the actual attackers of the deck, we play four copies of Brutal Jap and four copies of Excessive Battler, uh, Extreme Battler, and No Sledge. And No Sledge is just a very, very good grade too. Um, in the future, I might probably cut this for something else. I don't know, maybe like a cool Hank, uh, because like Restanding Gosachi is also not that bad too for your GB too. And uh, Cool Hank does give the unit plus 5k, which can, you know, poke still over 13k vanguards and stuff. So, we'll see. Um, and then, off to our grade 1s. Uh, we are playing four copies of the Strife Fodder, Arishad. Uh, if we do get the top 5 searcher grade 3 in the future, that might probably be replaced by this. Uh, since we are not playing that much grade 3s. Um, then we have three copies of General Hawk. I think before I was playing... What was I playing before this? I, I think I was playing Saucer, and I, I tested a couple of games with it, and I was like, no, this card is just not it, Chief. This ain't it. Um, and then I play three copies of Rise of Customs. If you want to, you can play Shout, uh, Clay Doll Shout. Not, not Clay Doll Shout, but um, the 6K Shout. So it rests, and you can, um, you and your opponent reveals top deck, uh, who has a higher grade, 
uh, adds that card to their hand who has a lower grade puts that thing to the soul so technically even if you do lo lose a toss up you still get some good incremental card advantage and especially if you do have your pieces to be able to restand a bunch into the turn you can get a bunch of additional drive checks we can push your opponent into into oblivion <laughs> <laughs> we could push your opponent by a lot of pressure. So you can probably replace the Rise of Custom with that. You can also um, cut down maybe one or two Strife Fodders. And you could even cut the the um, the Brutal Jacks as well to play them in, in Air 2 as well. So you have a lot of options. You have a lot of wiggle room. Um, it really depends on your own play style and taste. Then we have the uh, three copy of the Gun. What's his name? I keep forgetting his name for a sec. <laughs> uh, Gambaragon Three copies of Gambaragon Because he becomes your additional grade 2 And that is really good And then we head off to our triggers We have four copies of uh, Catchwall Extreme Battler Catchwall um, His skill is Rush When he's restood, stand another unit Which is awesome Because he gives you 2 free GB from his own From his own skill uh, 2 G flips from his own skill Four copies of V heals uh, you could opt to play one um, counter charge, soul charge heal if you want to. Because since this is going to be your main grade 3, uh, cards like... Um, you won't be able to counter charge for free that much anymore. So your counter blast are, is going to be a bit of an issue. But I mean you do have... You do have a lot of good options still though. So it's it's not it's not over. <laughs> it's not over by a long shot still. Alright, um, let's see, and then we do have the Stri Strife Auto Crit, I mean, we uh, V-Starter, because you want to keep a lot of soul, you want to be able to draw a bunch of cards, draw into your pieces, we do have, we do play 8 crits, uh, these can be uh, draw, draw trigger crits, but I've been testing these, uh, draw trigger PGs, and not, <laughs> and not uh, these crits. I mean, these crit sentinels, I mean, it really depends on your own play style and how you feel about how it is. I, I just don't want to have to discard additional cards that I'm going to need for combo pieces later on. I'd rather just use the, the raw, you know, 30k shield value that can sometimes protect yourself, but you do have rough, you do have rough games against decks that can hit over close to about a thousand K power. And you're like, well, you know, it's nice to have, you know, 60k power, but where am I going to get the extra 70k to protect myself from a, a one to pass, you know? So shield value is going to be a bit of an issue for the deck since you're going to be playing, you know, some low shield value cards here, especially with the three copies of Jarrah Hawk and the uh, Ali Shads. You're, you're going to have some low shield value all around, and that's kind of how, that's how it was in G. And I think even with premium, in introducing so many new cards are going to have issues like that still. And then we have three, three, five, three Strife Fighter crits from the Premium Collection 2020. Um, which allows you to, you know, stride even when you're behind. Um, your mulligans are going to be, of course, searching for excessive. Um, hopefully a grade 2 to ride into. A grade 1 to grade 2. Like, more or less, you're just hoping to get to those pieces. Um, and that's kind of, like, basically what you're going to be aiming for. And then we're going to be heading off into the G-Zone. Uh, this is also going to be a bit of trial and error as well. Uh, this is also going to be trial and error as well. I, I think I'm mostly going off of this G-Zone based on um, some previous metas or things you can probably be expecting. I am going to be playing, I am playing sadly enough, one copy of the um, Heteromorphic Dragon King Abzabulk <laughs> because of this grade 2. That's the only reason really. Because with like an XL marker or two, uh, you can kind of make some cute little plays and combos with it by restanding like, you know, your front row a couple more times to get some extra attacks in and stuff. So it's kind of nifty. I I don't think it's that good still. <laughs> I usually flip it up with a Bustard that we play two copies of, one winning champ. Him in Tribute basically facilitate the same thing but tribute retires the opponent's card before they're able to jigar to protect it with uh, a dismal that we do play a copy of um then we play uh, one copy of the progenitor dragon since we are playing six grade threes we're gonna have some issues sometimes of being able to shride uh proficiently even though we are playing like 
a bunch of areas different ways to strike. We have basically eight strike artists in our deck, but sometimes being able to strike for free, being able to slam these down as just like actual attackers and boosters sometimes uh, is beneficial to the deck. Um, then we play uh, two copies of Meteor Kaiser Victor. You can like you can cut out maybe a three bolt and maybe one copy of Bustard, and you can play four copies of Meteor Kaiser because you do have some game states where your opponent just doesn't want to give you any counter blast. Like giving counter blast to those deck can be a death sentence sometimes, and you oftentimes want to just be able to get some restance for free, uh, be able to pressure your opponent and get some G flip up for free. So that's that's pretty okay. Um, and then we are playing one copy of Meteor Kaiser uh, Union. Um, that the previous version of this deck didn't really need to play because you have some free counter charge, but because you're using a bunch of your soul, your counter blast, a lot of the games, uh, he actually can go off now, which is pretty fun. It's pretty funny. Um, and then we go to the the finishers, more or less, the finishers of the game. Um, the Fang Dragon King Dragger. He's your GB8. Uh, Cut him last one. Um, when he attacks, we stand all your units until end of turn. They get a once per turn ability. When they attack or boost, they restand, which is pretty nutty, especially if you drove into any like uh, crits or anything like that. And especially if we're playing, because we're playing like eight crits and four stand. Uh, I'm probably going to still maybe try to play with eight crits. If he doesn't, if I don't manage to do so, then that's fine. I, I think like having crits in this deck is a bit more beneficial than just like draws and stands and stuff. Like especially if you're trying to finish off the game. Um, and then we do have favorite champ Victor, which allows us to. Uh, uh, where's the where's the good boy? I'm being blind here. <laughs> yeah, favorite champ Victor right here front and center. Uh, favorite champ Victor. Uh, he has generation break two, con blast two. Uh, discard a card, stand as much of your regards as possible according to how much GB that you have faced up. And he, um, if you restood three or more, uh, if you restored three or more, you can discard three to stand himself and counter charge one. It's a whole skill, so you need to pay attention to that. <laughs> um, and then for additional G guard stuff, we do play Meteor Kaiser uh, Doctanian. Sorry, I'm sort of like so out of sorts of it. I'm trying to follow. <laughs> my own rhythm with it. Uh, Doctanian, if you have if you have less rear guards than your opponent, be it even like one less, so you can kind of like intercept. He's on you know five rear guards. You're now on four or three. Um, you try to be less than your opponent. He gets plus ten k shield, and he does have the ability of being able to flip himself face down uh, by soul blasting one, and you can counter charge or you can unlock a unit, which is pretty nice. <laughs> Then we have Meteor Kaiser Gun Greed. He is going to be a your, um, your G Flipper. He more or less allows you to turbo into your GB8 or also give you some additional counter charge because he does have a skill that if you're uh, after he's finished guarding, your Vanguard does get the continuous skill of um, if they do not oh, auto skill, sorry, does get the auto skill until end of turn um, when attack does not hit anymore. You get the counter charge one. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, anything else? Anything else to put in here? Oh, yeah. Winning Champ. I, I, what I did reference that Tree Bolt and Winning Champ does facilitate sort of the same conditions is that both of them have retiring effects whenever you restand a unit. Or, like, at the, this one is the end of battle. At the end of the battle, this one attacked, he retires the lowest power. This one is whenever a rear guard that you control restands, you kind of blast one. Uh, that unit gets plus 2k and you retire a unit that is less power than it. So this gets around... Um, what's that grade one again? <laughs> Honoli. It gets around Honoli, which is pretty nice. Uh, and that's it. It's kind of it for the G-Zone, more or less. Options that you can probably play in, in the G-Zone. You can probably play uh, Victor Plasma if you want to play around... Um, Lane Joker, if Chaos Breaker becomes pretty predominant again. Um, depends on your meta, depends on your situation. Any other G guys you want to play? I wouldn't play this. I, I don't really. I wouldn't play uh, Righteous Superhuman Blue Prison um, or uh, Meteor Kaiser Bustard. Universe Ace Bustard, however, yes. <laughs> Universe Ace Bustard, yes. The rest, no. And then we will head over to the perspective cards and and 
Let's see. Let's see here. So cards that you can probably end up running in this deck. Um, Extreme Battler Gunsden. He is more or less an additional grade 2 in a deck. His Generation Break 1, rest its unit. Uh, choose up to 5 of your rear guards until end of turn. They get continuous resist. Which is pretty good if you're going against a uh, lock matchup, a um, retire matchup. It protects your grade 2s. Make sure that a lot of your aggressive turns is you know safe and accounted for. And he also has an additional skill of rush. Uh, once per turn, when his unit stands to the effect of one of your cards, uh, this unit gets uh, plus 4k um, until the end until the end of turn for each card face up in your G zone, which is nice. So you can oftentimes he can be a 28k attacker or 28k booster on his own, depending on how much you ended up G guarding or protecting yourself against a lot of your opponent's aggression. So, all right. And then we have Extreme Battle General Hawk. I think we already play him already, so we don't need to really talk about him. All right, other trigger triggers that you could probably end up playing. You have Perfect Referee 299, GB1, uh, zero in its cost. You don't need to pay anything. Choose up to one of your rear guards until end of turn. Rush, auto, win this unit to stand due to effect of one of your cards until end of turn. This unit gets auto rear guard circle. Um, when this unit attacks a vanguard, this unit gets uh, 5k until end of that battle, which is pretty nice because it allows you to um, get some ad additional attacks in without having to commit any extra like boosters or anything out of your hand, uh, which is kind of nice. I like this. I like this a little bit. It feels okay. <laughs> um, and you need to declare the cause by paying it. So, you know, you get an additional 5k. I think it stacks from what I see. No, oh, the skill is once per turn. The skill um, is once per turn. But I don't think its ability is because you can give multiple time the red text to the card. Huh, that's nice. Alright, and then we have the Extreme Battle Catch Wall. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, he gives you the extra GB that you're probably going to end up needing. Um,. Let's see. Generation Break 1, put this on the bottom of your deck. When it's unit stand due to the effect of your uh, of your card, you may pay the cost. If you do, uh, draw a card, choose one of your rear guards, stand it, and shuffle, in, uh, shuffle your deck. So it allows you to draw an additional card, get some extra pieces, uh, filter out your deck of any dead cards you're going to probably need. Alright. And then we have additional option as well. We used to play this card a while back. Uh, sadly enough, it doesn't really benefit you too much other than just a generic restand uh, she is generation break one at the end of battle this is a unit is boosted choose one of your other rear guards and you may stand it if you do return this unit into your deck uh, this unit to your deck and shuffle your deck so she just more or less restands one of your rear guards for free so it's all right I think this could be okay with um, dose sledge maybe Possibly could be a, a, okay with Dose Sledge because you're attacking them first for 13. You restand them, he gets 10k. You attack again, you attack with your Vanguard, or you attack with one of the other rear guards that allows you to restand something. Uh, you restand them again, you get a Soul Charge off, you Soul Blast again. So you, you can kind of get some really cute plays going off with her um, just off of that. So that could be nice. Um, then that's it. That's more or less it. it. This has been close to half an hour. <laughs> So hopefully you guys um, enjoyed some of this more in-depth discussion and talk about um, some of the options and things that you can probably play. You can also play draw PGs. You can also play more. You can play even like a front or two and maybe use the um, which, the God Hand engine. But it can come out a bit awkward because those Sledge does Soul Charge your card. So even putting like a front trigger on the top of your deck could be a bit of a detriment. So you need to be very careful about that. Um, and... Uh, that's kind of it right now. So be awesome. Stay awesome, guys. Have a wonderful day. If you have any suggestions, you have any things that you also want to talk about, you can contact me via Discord or via Twitter at GGMrRogers. Um, and I'm always I have an ear. <laughs> you always have my ear. So uh, so be awesome. Stay awesome, guys. Have a wonderful day. Be safe. Uh, it's, a wild, it's a wild, weird world out there. <laughs> WWW. Wild, weird world. So, um... Stay safe and stay awesome.